how are you all doing? I hope that you have enjoyed your recent holiday with family and friends. Here at ICA, we missed you. We want you to know that every Sunday, it is our desire, our prayer, and our intention that you will continue to experience hope in this time of pandemic and to exercise faith so important in Christ. And every week that you're reminded and encounter the love of our Heavenly Father, that you are loved, that you are important, you and your family. And uh, today we want you to know that we loved you and we missed you too. Uh, we want to talk about trees in this new message series. Why trees? Because trees are vital. Trees are so important. I know that all of us, we do. We love trees, the beauty as well as the benefits of trees. Studies have shown to us again and again that trees has the ability to make us happier and healthier. They give us not only our food and furnitures at home, but also to provide a shade and shelter. What would we do without trees in this world? And yet, sadly, myself and so many of us, we do take trees for granted. We hardly know the trees around us. I really do not know even the names of the trees here in Hong Kong. But it's never too late. Today, we want to study the trees found in the Bible because I believe the, sto the, the, the trees have stories to tell and lessons to teach us since they are the longest living species on earth. We will learn so much from them. They, in fact, give us a link between the past, the present, and the future. Today, I want to introduce to you a very special kind of tree mentioned in the Bible, and that is the tree of life. I'm going to take you back to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse 9 in the story of creation. Listen to these words. And out of the ground, the Lord God made it to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst at the center of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and, e and evil. Imagine with me for a moment, if you would just close your eyes, uh, smell the fragrance, uh, see the beauty of the trees and even taste the sweetness of the fruits. It is a perfect garden. And, and, and this, is, this is the ideal uh, picture of what the world should look like and we should be in and enjoying such a world. And here God planted and He placed two trees, the tree of life, uh, which is the source of life in this garden for all of us and also that gives us eternal life, both physical and spiritual life. It is a symbol of mankind free from sin and enjoying a healthy, loving, thriving relationship with the Creator and calling the Creator, the Maker Himself, Father. The tree of knowledge of good and evil also known as the forbidden tree, is the source of death, not only physical, but also spiritual, eternal death. It is a separation not only from God, but from one another. It is a symbol of humanity enslaved by sin. It is a symbol uh, and also uh, uh, represent humanity's rebellion against God Himself. There was nothing intrinsically wrong with the tree, nor the fruit from the tree. Some said that the fruit is apple. Jewish tradition said possibly grape or apricot. But the problem is not with the fruit or the tree itself, but what it represents. If you notice for a moment, let's talk about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In the Bible story, there are three keywords that puzzle me describing this tree. And that is the word good, the word evil, and then the word death. It is interesting the word good appeared nine times prior to the mention of this tree. So every time when God finished creating something, at the end of the day, He, he expressed it by saying it is good. After creating Adam and Eve, God said it is very good and He is pleased. But then why? Why this tree of the knowledge of good and 
evil brings about death. Well, I just want us to know that Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 19, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Did you notice? Only God is good. So anything outside of God, anything that is without God, is not good. May appear to be good, but is not good in the eyes of God. It is evil, in fact. Therefore, comparing this verse with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, things that appear to be good in the eyes of men, but minus God, not in relationship with God, not related to God, not directed or connected with God, is not good for men. It is evil and therefore produced a separation, being enslaved by, by it, by sin, and it leads to death, spiritual as well. So I want us to know the tree of life is the complete opposite from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In our life, every day, we are faced with choices to go to pick to eat from the tree of life or to go to pick and to eat to draw our strength, our wisdom, our help from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Every day, we are faced with these choices, even right now, today, at this moment. When we go to the right tree, the tree of life, we will receive life. We will receive the needed wisdom, provision, protection from Him, from God who is the source. So I would compare this, the tree of life promotes and invites us into a relationship with God. It is always God-centered. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it is man-centered. In fact, it can also be in a package of something that we call religion. Religion can be practiced without being in relationship with God Himself. Religion focuses on the precept instead of the person, the presence of God. Focuses on the law, not necessarily the love. The love of God and the love for God and the love for others. The tree of life focuses on loving God, loving others, just as we love ourselves. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil focuses on self-love, which is destructive by itself. The tree of life focuses on God's righteousness, the finished work of Jesus Christ, what God has done for me rather than what I can do for Him. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil strive for man to perform what man can do for God, which results in self-righteousness. And we see that again and again in the New Testament, in the Gospel especially. So let me give you an example here. The scripture tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. I would say sacrifice is better than obedience. Why is that obedience can be better than sacrifice? Because sacrifice is good, at least in the eyes of men. Answering that question, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 3, Paul helps us understand. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clinging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, the keyword, knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. I thought that is sacrificial act. Why is that? not good enough. Anything that is outside of God, anything that is not in obedience to God, it could be sacrificial. It is never good enough. I've always liked to add on to this verse, obedience is better than sacrifice because faith is better than obedience. It is not the act itself, but in how we respond and relate to God. And it is God-centered. It is focusing on a relationship, and that is with God. We are created for relationships with God and with one another. We cannot survive on our own, and therefore we've been explaining here, none of us can make it on our own without a support group. We need our kingdom group. We need one another. We need a spiritual community because Anything that is outside of relationship with God 
and with our fellow brothers and sisters will result in deaths. And therefore, the world without God is dying. This world without Jesus is dying. That's the result of partaking from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the outcome, the consequence of rebelling against God. So here, we see these two trees at the beginning of the book of Genesis, so important. At the end of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, there is a focus on only one of the three, and that is the tree of life. And for the rest of this teaching, this message, I want to talk about the tree of life. And this is what the title for this message, the tree of life. The tree of life is mentioned 10 times in the entire Bible, three times in the book of Genesis, four times in the book of Proverbs, and three times in the book of Revelation. First, we see this tree lost in the book of Genesis and then regained, recovered in the book of Revelation. And then finally, we see the tree, how it is being lifted out, how it impacts our life here today in the book of Proverbs, which we will learn at the end of this message. We are looking at the application of the tree of life. Let's look at the first point, the tree in the past. In the book of Genesis, as we have introduced to you at the beginning, the position of the tree is right at the center of the garden. God is at the center. Life is at the center. Not men. Uh, look from uh, the, the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to work it and keep it. Very interesting. God gave a purpose. Uh, to Adam, to work the garden and to keep, to keep it. Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now, the second I thought I want to talk about the tree of life is that it is for men to enjoy. It is God's plan, His will, His perfect will for you to enjoy life here on earth, to enjoy your life, to enjoy not only the things, but the people in your life. Let me pause here for a moment. Are you enjoying the people in your life? Do you want to enjoy the people in your life? Place God at the center of that relationship. A marriage where Jesus is not at the center of it, you can never enjoy your spouse your family, if God is not at the center of your family, of your home, you can never enjoy your children or your parents or the people in, at home. But when God is at the center, He gives you license and permission to enjoy your workplace, to enjoy your work. So this is so key because this is what life is supposed to be. It's meant to be your life, not only mine or some of us, but your life today. The tree of life have taught us right now at this moment that you must, you should, you are entitled to enjoy. Now, I'm going to just share with us the tree in the future, our second point, found in the book of Revelation. If you would look at Revelation 2 verse 7, Jesus said, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who conquers, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. The position of the tree now in the book of Revelation is in the paradise, in the garden of God. Now, the produce of this tree in Revelation 22 verse 2, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, every month bearing fruits. What a fruitful tree. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. This is what it produced, the tree of life in Revelation. And finally, Revelation 22 verse 14, the permission to come to the tree. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. And that is the future. So we have seen in the book of Genesis, the tree of life in the past, now we have seen very quickly and briefly the tree of life in the future. Now, I'm going to focus on the tree of life in the present. The book of Proverbs has a lot to tell us. Now, let me ask you, where is the tree now? The present. It's not a trick question. There's a 
there is a good answer and a practical answer to this question. The tree is no longer an object. It's not a thing. It is a person. And that is Jesus Christ himself. You and I, we can experience, we are invited, we are permitted to experience this tree of life today, right here. And that is Jesus himself. Psalms 34 verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Oh, taste and see. I could imagine now going back to the Garden of Eden where I smell the fragrance of the tree, where I enjoy the sight of the tree, the beauty of that tree, and, and also tasting the sweetness of the fruits. Oh, come and taste. See that the Lord is good. We are here today being invited to come and smell the fragrance again, to taste the goodness and to see the goodness of our Father, our Maker and Creator. God is redeeming and restoring all that was lost in the Garden of Eden. He's redeeming it for us. It is restored to us right here, not the future, not something that we needed to wait, but something that we cannot wait to experience right here. And that is only found in Jesus. God is giving you and I the permission to partake and eat from the tree of life. And that is Jesus himself. How can that be? How is it possible, Pastor Ed? Turn with me to John chapter 6, verse 53. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in Him. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Did you hear these words? Did you notice the key word, life? Did you notice the word abide? Wow, eternal life. The tree of life in the book of Genesis that is the source of life and eternal life now is found in Jesus. The tree of life that invites us to partake of it. Now Jesus, He invites you and I to come to partake of it. His blood and, 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 his, and His flesh. To enjoy Him. God has sent Jesus to die on that tree. Another tree. And that is the cross. Listen to these uh, verses concerning the tree of Jesus. Acts chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised Jesus whom you killed by hanging Him on a tree. Acts 30 verse 39, And we are witnesses of all that He did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put Him to death by hanging Him on a tree. Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. 1 Peter 2 verse 24, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree, that we might die to sin and to live to righteousness by His wounds, you have been healed. That tree of life, Jesus Himself provides healing as well, just as the book of Revelation that we see that tree of life. So again, I pause here for a moment. For those of us who are asking the question, Pastor Anne, it is wonderful to have that tree of life in the Garden of Eden. How sad we lost it. No, God has restored it. He has planted that tree here on earth present for us to enjoy so that we can receive life again. And that tree is found in Jesus Himself. There are two ways to live today, not the future, not one day. Never mind about the past, how you have lived your life today. You have a choice to live in rebellion against God, out of relationship with Him, or to be in relationship with Him. To live a God-centered life, knowing that He loves you so that you can love Him in return. Or to just simply live a religious life, focusing on what man can do or man should do. You have a choice today. Which tree will you choose from? Life or death? Who will you choose? Jesus or self? Jesus or the world? Jesus or man? Jesus 
or money. His death on the cross, on that tree, had made it possible for you and I to enjoy from the tree of life again. Let us eat from the tree of life. I pray that you will feed the tree of life, feed Jesus in your marriage, that your marriage will have life again, that your marriage will be fruitful instead of barren, that your body will partake from the tree of life, Jesus, so that your body can be well, full of vigor, energy, healed and restored, that in the workplace, that you will use the wisdom from that tree Feed your workplace with the tree of life. Take off the fruit from the tree of life that in your work you will prosper, that you will be promoted and provided for. In everything that you do, wherever you are, in every relationship today, friends, I encourage you and invite you to come to Jesus, our tree of life, so that you will live a life that is meaningful, that is pleasing to God and pleasing to man, enjoying the favor of God and the favor of man. What are the outcome when you and I eat from the tree of life? Very quickly, as we come to a close, the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13, a long passage, but really worth reading. Listen carefully. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding. For the gain from her, which is referring to wisdom, is better than gain from silver, and her profit better than gold. She, meaning wisdom, is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who hold, to lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called blessed. Proverbs 30, 11 verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and whoever captures souls is wise. Proverbs 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. The tree of life produces satisfaction, fulfillment a meaningful life and a beautiful, wonderful life. And finally, Proverbs 15 verse 4, a gentle tongue is a tree of life. That's what I need. That's what I want. Eating from Jesus produced gentle words, edifying, uplifting, words that heals because the tree of life heals. But, pers uh, uh, per but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Oh, friends, today, I am so excited to come to the tree of life. Jesus himself, I invite you to come to that tree, Jesus. Not just something that is futuristic, but present. Would you close your eyes? Join me in prayer. Father, I just pray for all that are watching and listening to this. Oh, what a discovery. The tree of life is here. What a discovery. It's not just something that is in the past, not just something that we look forward to in the future, but the tree of life is here. There's so many times I miss that. And that is Jesus Himself, the one who died on the tree, has become the tree, the tree of life that gives life, the source of life. Today I pray for everyone that we will come and eat of that tree so that our lives and everything that we do will benefit from the fruit of this tree. We invite Jesus to be at the center of our relationships, at home, our workplace. So vital. Jesus, you are beautiful. Jesus, you have blessed us so much. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy 
Lord arisen and exalted one, Jesus. Your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is I love you, I love you, and Jesus, I love you. 